so this is my final review and I just got to be honest Are you thinking of starting a YouTube channel or specifically taking Ali Abdel's part-time YouTuber Academy? If so, you are in the right place because I'm enrolled in the final cohort and it's week six, the final week of the course. And this is my honest opinion of the course. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Crystal and I'm a pastry chef turned entrepreneur based in Jakarta, Indonesia. And my channel is about sharing my journey as a pastry chef and building a business while sharing productivity tips and also occasional travel vlogs and recipes. So this video will be about my final review, my honest opinion on the PTYA Part-Time YouTuber Academy. So this video will be broken down into three parts, which is the first part will be what I think should be improved in the course, Secondly, things I loved about the course. And thirdly, my tips on getting the most out of the course. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. So the first part is what I think could have been improved in the course. The first thing that I think they should have improved in the course is to suggest that we outsource editing as soon as possible. Since a good 80% of the course participants were newbies that have never filmed, edited, or did any scripting ever before, I think that the team should have suggested to outsource editing earlier. And since there's a module on how to create a sustainable system to create videos with outsourcing things that you can actually delegate so that you can focus and have more time on the important things that actually require personal touch for you to actually do it on your own, I think that that module, the part about outsourcing and tips on finding an editor that suits your style, should have been moved early on to the course or even during discovery calls whenever people, I'm sure that I'm not the only one that has worries about enrolling into a course with so much information as a newbie. So I think that would be something that is reassuring to know and a tip that would definitely be useful. The second thing that I think should have been improved is that Ali's Q&A sessions should have been more targeted towards broader questions that are more relevant to everybody in each level of their YouTube journey. So we have a Q&A session every Friday with Ali where we go on Zoom for two or three hours to answer questions that everybody has throughout the course. I soon realized after a few sessions that a lot of the questions came from participants who are further down in their YouTube journey and a few dozen videos in their YouTube channel asking for feedback on how they can improve, which was really relevant and refreshing because there were actually technical problems that we would eventually face in our YouTube journey. Although towards the end, I realized that the team realized this problem and Ali became more picky in the questions that he answered and he was also more mindful in answering the questions in a more broader sense that would be helpful to more people. Part two is what I loved about the course. So the first thing that I really loved about the course is the pressure of having to do weekly homework. I really appreciated the fact that the student supporters made it really clear from the beginning that the single most important thing to do for you is to pass up the weekly homework, which is to create a video every week, which will eventually get feedback from the student supporters, detailed feedback on certain aspects of your video. Even if you cannot attend all of the courses since you have lifetime access for all of these courses and you can watch them even after the course has ended, and the only thing that you would be missing out is that after the course has ended, you would not have access to the student supporters giving you detailed feedback anymore. So that is the most important thing to do. And I really focused on doing that. But of course, I tried as much as possible to attend the courses live since you can ask questions. Because the detailed feedback from the student supporters were really useful because they commented on each aspect of your videos, highlighting blind spots that you wouldn't have thought of, and giving you technical advice on things that you can improve on, such as the volume of background music, the use of B-roll, the way that you're scripting, and many other aspects that you would not have thought of if you're just starting out and making YouTube videos. This pressure of having to create weekly videos really made me improve in the sense of camera confidence. I realized after a couple of weeks while filming that it was really different from when I first made my first video. I was struggling so much to start filming. I had to retake so many times, but after a while, there was one time that on the third week I was traveling during the course and I had to shoot in my hotel room together with a friend. She was doing something else and I had to shoot in the presence of my friend, but it just seemed to flow really naturally. Of course, it was awkward in the beginning, but I couldn't have imagined doing that in the beginning of the course. So at that point, I was really amazed at the progress that I've made. And I'm sure it's because of the pressure of creating weekly videos each week that made me gain confidence over time. 
Just a quick note, if you like my videos, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us a lot. The second thing that I really liked about the course is the Tuesday tutorials and breakout rooms. So every Monday, Ali would come and give us a three hour long session about the week's topic and it would usually be a fire hose of information where you would be overwhelmed on where to start implementing, especially if you're a beginner. That's when Tuesday Tutorials with Tintin, who is Ali's producer, comes in handy where we go through the week's topic more slowly and go through the worksheets and actually do them together with other participants in breakout rooms. It really is useful because then we can discuss in the breakout room with, with other participants how they are facing hurdles in implementing the concepts that we're learning throughout the course at our level. And it's also a great way to solidify your value proposition for the channel by speaking more about it with your peers. And fun fact that Tintin is also working on his YouTube channel on the side, so he has some tips and tricks on how he can do it while working full-time for Ali. The third thing that I really liked about the course is the one-on-one -on -one sessions with the student supporters. As someone who thinks out loud a lot, I really appreciate this part of the course where you can book a session with a student supporter for 15 minutes each week to discuss about your progress. You can get accountability or even just discuss and gain feedback, further feedback on your videos. And as the course progresses, I became more aware of more questions that I had after learning more things that the questions that I needed to ask had to be explained in more detail in the context of my channel and it was not really possible for me to ask these questions during the live sessions. Questions like my value proposition being wanting to help aspiring pastry chefs or hobbyists build a cake business. I was wondering if the types of videos that I'm making would be too broad and the things that I was thinking of making were like on productivity, entrepreneurship, recipes, and also occasional travel vlogs. I was wondering if that was too broad and wanted to get guidance on that because I was worried if people really liked my recipe videos, would they not expect entrepreneurship videos and thus lose interest in my channel? Those types of questions were the questions that I had and wanted guidance on. Also got a lot of guidance on technical aspects like creating a bureau library, filming yourself while doing various things every day so that you can use it when you're creating a video, you can just like take some bureau from that library and also how to present images in a more interesting manner in a video, which seems obvious, but I've never really thought about. Lastly, I really loved the guest Q&A sessions and found them useful because it shows that there's a lot of ways that you can actually go about doing a YouTube channel and there's not just one absolute way to do it. One of the most impressive sessions was with Dami Lee, who is an alumni of the PTYA as well. She's an architect who creates super cinematic videos on interior design and architecture. Transparency and willingness to share from these guest speakers was unbelievable. It was really eye-opening for them to share inside information that could be somewhat sensitive, such as their analytics and also how they built a team to make this content creation process more sustainable with delegation. Finally, in part three of the video where I discuss things that I would have paid more attention to and tips and tricks on getting the most out of the course. The first tip is to ask a lot of questions even though it might have been asked by somebody else before. A lot of times in the course, I felt that a lot of questions that I had in mind weren't really relevant and that it wasn't even worth asking because I've only started this YouTube channel ever since the start of the course. I don't have a lot of videos in my YouTube channel. So I felt like through experience, I would be able to eventually find the answers to the questions I had in mind. But there's also the pressure of this course being only six weeks long. And what if I don't find the answers to these questions? I would not have access to the people who can actually guide me. But I asked anyway and managed to ask a question during the final weekly Q&A session with Ali. And since Ali is such a great and patient listener, he managed to answer my questions about niche, value proposition, and target audience at a level that matches where I'm at in my YouTube journey and that provided more clarity and more certainty on how I should be approaching my videos. I also made sure to book a one-on-one -on -one session with the PTYA student supporters at least once a week to get feedback. The second tip is to network as much as possible and join groups on WhatsApp, Discord, and all the various platforms so that you can form lasting friendships that would take you further in the journey. So I joined a ton of accountability groups and also formed groups with people on, in the same area and region as me on WhatsApp. There we would discuss and gain feedback from each other on videos, thumbnails, and also titles. Like for example, for one of my videos, I was confused on doing like these three thumbnail al alternatives and I didn't know which one to pick so I just did a poll on WhatsApp and my friends from that group actually voted and I picked the one that was voted the most. It's also a really nice way to have opportunities for future collaborations and also invite these friends of yours to come for an interview in your YouTube channel or maybe do a podcast together 
and most importantly to have a feedback loop that will last after the course is ended. Third and final tip is please, please, please get an editor as soon as you can. I cannot emphasize this enough and I couldn't have imagined not having an editor while joining this course because there's really a fire hose of information and you need the time and energy to digest all of this because you would need a lot of time to actually think of the more important things that aren't really easily delegatable such as things that require personal touch like writing a script and also thinking of the concept of the thumbnails. One of the most useful things that I learned in this course is to create a sustainable system. Think of this content creation process not as a work of art, but instead as a system that you can systemize and actually delegate parts to other people so that you can think of the more important things. That really changed my perspective and gave me confidence that I could be able to do this on the long run even while doing my full-time job. Closing thoughts. It was a really great course, despite the fact that I was worried about a lot of things, such as it being expensive. It was 1,500 US dollars even when on discount. And I had a lot of worries about not being able to get the most out of the course since I was such a newbie. But I'm so glad that I signed up to the PTYA because it was such a life-changing experience and it was an opportunity for me to get close to many amazing creators on the internet from different parts of the world. And also, I wouldn't have thought of a better way to start my YouTube journey. If you're curious about the prep that I did before starting the course, you might want to check out this video right here. And see you in the next one. Bye!